The story is set during a time when the Jedi Order and the Galactic Republic were living in peace. But then someone learned to use the Force and sought revenge. A veiled girl enters Ueda City and makes her way to the local inn. At the gate, she gives alms to a beggar who answers her question about the presence of a Jedi inside the inn. Without wasting any time, she enters and stands in front of Jedi Master Indara. She urges Master Indara to attack her barehanded. The rest of the men laugh at her unexpected and childish wish. But Master Indara refuses to attack as she has no quarrel with her. However, the girl insists anyway. Master Indara never attacks an unarmed person as it is a Jedi rule, but the girl starts a fist fight with the men sitting at Master Indra's table. She throws them away unarmed, and when one of them tries to shoot her with his weapon, she saves herself by using a table as a shield and pushes it towards the attacker. At the same time, Master Indara grabs her hand and tries to stop her. The girl then tries to snatch Master Indara's weapon. After the failed attempt, she draws her own knife and points it at Master Indara's throat, but Master Indara effectively stops her with her Jedi power. Even though the girl is not a Jedi, she has definitely learned from a great master. Master Indara asks who her master is, but the girl jumps onto the rooftop and holds the knife to the throat of an innocent girl. Master Indara immediately follows her, but the ruthless attacker throws the innocent girl down. Master Indara uses her Jedi power to save her from falling. Master Indara then dodges the girl's attacks and throws her away without touching her. She dodges every attack and even overpowers the attacker, but wastes the chance to kill the girl and removes the veil from her face to see who she is. Master Indara is shocked to see it is Osha, but Osha pushes Master Indara against the wall and throws numerous knives at her. Master Indara breaks all the knives with her shiny sword and gets ready to attack Osha. Suddenly, she hears a clatter in the inn as one Weta villager is still standing there. Using this distraction, Osha throws a knife at the villager, and Master Indara uses her power to save him. At the same time, Osha throws a knife at Indara which pierces her chest. Master Indara dies immediately, and Osha escapes. Later that night, Osha wakes up on a spaceship and greets her droid named Pip with a very good morning. Hearing the siren, she gets ready for her daily job as a menic and wears her special suit to do welding outside the ship to make a protective shield. Suddenly, a spike in pressure ignites a fire, but Osha struggles to extinguish it as she remembers her mother, who died in flames when she was a child. Meanwhile, a Jedi ship arrives, and two Jedi named Yord and Tassi disembark. They ask the authorities about Osha, knowing she works as a mechnek from ship to ship. Initially, they deny the presence of any Jedi named Osha. Seeing Yord lift his hand to read his memory, the authority admits they can find her in bunk 23. Osha is thrilled to see Yord after so long as they were close friends. He shares that he is now a knight and asks Osha to sit down before he tells her the purpose of his arrival. Tassi reads her record, revealing that she was brought to become a Jedi at the age of eight after her entire family was murdered in a huge fire. Her whole village was burnt down before she was brought to become a Jedi, and her training was very hard. Despite this, she decided to leave and became a mechnic. Osha explains that she needed a paycheck and perks. Tassi reveals that last night a girl matching her description murdered a Jedi on Ueda, so she has to leave with them. She asks Yord if they can even question her loyalty, but Tassi brings in a Ueda citizen who witnessed Indara's murder. He assures them she is the murderer. Despite Osha's denial, they take her to Coruscant. In Coruscant, a well-developed city, Master Sol is teaching his Padawans when Vernesta enters the room. He dismisses the class, and Vernesta informs him that they have arrested Osha as the prime suspect in the murder of Master Indara. He has a strong attachment to her, as he saved her when the entire village burned and trained her as a Jedi. However, Vernesta advises him to put his emotions aside and investigate the matter before their opponents can exploit the situation to monopolize against them. Meanwhile, Osha is placed in a prison cell. The prisoners plan to escape the ship using an escape pod, and suddenly the ship strikes the rocks. It jolts and the prisoners grab the robot guard. They break his head and arm, using his arm to open the door. They unlock each door except Osha's and leave the ship using an escape pod. Osha tries to reach Pip and catches it when the ship jolts. She opens her cage and before leaving the ship using the last escape pod, 
She opens the door of the last prisoner subjugated using a parasite. Osha removes the parasite from his face. He leaves using the last escape pod, leaving Osha alone to die in the ship. She immediately ties herself with a belt as the ship starts falling down. It crashes on the snowy land of Karluk. At the same time, Tassi enters Master Saul's room, finding him watching the memories of his old Padawans. This seems strange to Tassi, but Sul believes it is important to hold on to the memories as they are lessons. They walk to the prisoner's cells where the prisoners who escaped the ship have been arrested again. They accuse Osha of destroying the ship, but Master Sol uses his power to read the truth from their memories that they left Osha alone on the ship to die. Master Saul wants to go to Karlak to save Osha, but knowing there is hardly any chance she survived, Vernestra does not want Sol to go. However, he gets permission to leave with Tassi and Yord. Meanwhile, Osha opens her eyes and sees a small girl with a similar face standing in front of her. She immediately starts following her. Master Saul informs Tassi that he has chosen her to accompany him on her first rescue mission. They inform Yord to get ready in five minutes. The girl stops in front of Osha and reveals her face. She is May, her twin sister, whom Osha believed died in the fire along with the rest of their family. Osha watches fire all around her, and once again May starts running and stops at their home in the village, and they sing their childhood rhyme together. Suddenly, Osha wakes up from her dream and cannot believe she saw her sister May alive. Master Saul explains to Tassi that he has known Osha for 16 years as he was posted on the planet Brandok, Osha's homeland. One day, her sister May started a fire that burnt their entire family. He could only save Osha while May died, and he saw her dying. They reach Karlek and land on its surface while Osha leaves the broken ship before their arrival. Master Saul looks around the ship and finds no one. Suddenly, he senses something and asks Yord to run. Meanwhile, Osha runs towards a cave in search of May. Sol enters the same cave and finds Osha standing on the edge. He warns her to step back, but she tells Sol that she did not kill Indara. At the same time, Osha's feet slip and she falls, but Master Sol stops her from falling using his mysterious power. He tells her that he believes she did not kill anyone and takes her with him. Meanwhile, May listens to her master, who, without revealing his face, gives her a lesson that she must kill a Jedi without a weapon. Because Jedi are not afraid of blades or lasers, they are acolytes who kill dreams. It's Olega, and a kid hits the main door of the Olega temple, setting off the security alarm by hitting it. Suddenly, May arrives with a hood on her head to conceal her face and throws a magnet that disables the security droid. She enters the temple unarmed and reaches Master Torben's room, where he is meditating with closed eyes. She urges him to attack her, but he does not listen. When she attacks him to get his attention, an unseen shield protects Master Torben from her attacks. Angered, May finally takes out her knife to break the protective barrier and uses all her force to breach it. But neither the shield breaks, nor does Master Torben open his eyes. Suddenly, she hears footsteps approaching, as that they have detected an intruder who breached the temple's security and are searching the whole premises. May immediately gets on the roof and disappears. A man enters the room, looks around, and finds no one. Meanwhile, Osha wakes up, and unlike any other prisoner, Master Sol did not handcuff her. She solves a problem that Padawan Tassi was facing on the ship. Tassi is impressed that she chose the difficult job of a mechnek while Yord argues with Sol to put handcuffs on Osha, as she is a regular prisoner who has successfully escaped after murdering Master Indara. But Sol knows that she did not murder or kill anyone. Besides, she has not trained in the last six years after leaving the Order, hence Yord must not cloud his judgment by allowing fear to take over his mind. Afterward, he reports to Vernestra that they have found out Osha's twin sister is alive and there is a chance she attacked and killed Indara. Vernestra has reason to believe it is true because she shares that recently someone with Osha's face attacked Master Torben in the Temple of Olega. She permits Master Saul to continue his investigation and go to Olega. Yor disagrees with Master Saul about taking Osha along to Olega for the investigation, but agrees when he hears that Vernestra allowed it. At the same time, May enters an alchemy shop and finds Kamir sleeping. He is an accomplice blending in with common people, but actually helping May to kill Jedi Masters. She has to kill at least one Jedi without a weapon to please her master. 
Although she tried killing Master Torben, he is invincible as he does not respond to any provocation. Kimir wants her to find his weakness and kill him before time runs out. She has to kill four Jedi Masters and decides to kill the rest of the two without a weapon. But for this one, she needs poison. Kimir prepares the poison and gives it to her while she assures Kimir will not tell her master about it. Meanwhile, Master Saul admits to Osha that he tried to save Mei too, but failed. She understands that. And at the same time, they reach Olega. They bow before the temple in charge, and he grants them permission to search the temple to continue with the murder investigation. At the same time, a man brings the same child who took money from Mei and tampered with the entry door droid that let her enter the temple. Meanwhile, May finds that Master Torben had a very disturbing past and can't let go of its memories. She uses this as his weak spot and urges Master Torben to speak. The temple in charge tells Master Saul that even though he will grant permission to meet Master Torben, they can't speak to him as he has not spoken to anyone in 10 years. At the same time, Master Torben opens his eyes and tells May that he was waiting for her. He laments that they thought they were doing the right thing, but they were wrong. He takes poison with his own hands and dies instantly. Suddenly, Osha separates from the rest of the group as she sees Mei in a corner. She runs to follow her while Yord follows Osha. By the time Osha reaches Torben, Mei has escaped, leaving the poison bottle behind. In the meantime, Master Saul reaches the room with the rest of the companions, and they think that Osha killed Master Torben. But Yord assures them that he has been following Osha all along and Torben was dead before Osha entered the room. She hands over the poison bottle, revealing Master Torben killed himself, and Osha identifies the poison as being from her homeland, Brandok. They identify Kimir as an outsider in the market and plan to send Osha to him. She will talk to him while the rest of them listen to their conversation to help them find Mei. Yord is against giving Osha a weapon, but Master Saul gives her a gun for protection. She takes a black cloak to appear before Kimir as Mei. Kimir asks her if the poison worked, confirming that Mei killed Master Torben. Then he realizes that she is not Mei. Instead, he is talking to her sister Osha. Master Saul reaches Kimir and asks him who Mei's master is. Kimir pleads with Saul that he does not know who Mei's master is. He is just a supplier who sells things for the right price, and Mei has to visit him tonight to get a few things. All he knows is that she wants to kill four Jedi. Hence, Master Saul orders them to secure the premises and asks Osha to come with him. That night, Osha argues with Master Saul to confront Mei alone as she wants to know why Mei killed their whole family. But Master Saul advises her to get out of her grief and think wisely. She knows that Master Saul will be one of the Jedi Mei wants to kill. The same night, Master Saul calls Mei's name when he sees her walking on the street while Yord and Tassi are appointed as security at a distance. Mei suddenly attacks Master Saul, and he notices she is attacking without a weapon. He throws her away, taking all the knives she was hiding. Yord informs Osha that Saul has found Mei. Saul discovers that Mei also does not know who her master is. Mei has thought all these years that Osha died, but Saul tells her that she is alive. Suddenly, they surround Mei and tell her that she is under arrest but May throws massive dust in the air and disappears. They immediately reach the city gates to stop May from escaping, but May takes down a citizen and gets into a vehicle. At the same time, Osha seizes May by pointing her gun at her. They experience a nostalgic moment, but Osha opens fire. However, it does not hit May and she escapes. On the other hand, Vernestra calls Master Soul back as they are going to strategize the next step of the investigation because the culprit is not a Jedi. The next morning, Mei gets angry with Kimir for informing the Jedi about her, but Kimir offers to take her to the Forest of Kofar as an apology, because that's where they can find a Wukai Jedi, and it is the place where Mei's next target, Kalneka, lives.